Hello, my name is Latricia Renee and welcome to my channel. For this video, I'm going to show you a couple of my attempts at character design, what worked, what didn't, and just my general process along the way. Now, the first character I'm showing is Red from my Little Red Riding Hood comic. For those of you who haven't seen my previous video on doing scripting and thumbnails for my Little Red Riding Hood comic, I did talk about how this is my very first comic and I'm kind of showing you guys the process of what I'm learning along the way so that hopefully you can learn along with me. So going into this, I didn't really have a clear idea of what it is that I wanted from the character design sheet. I knew that I basically needed to draw my character, that I wanted to figure out her color palette, that I wanted to have a good idea of what her outfit is and that sort of thing. But that's about it. <laughs> I wanted Red's design to be very simple because I was going to be drawing her a lot. I did want her to be easily identifiable. So she has, of course, her signature red cloak. Then I also decided I wanted to stick with the classic poofy dress idea that I see a lot. But I did want to keep it, again, very simple. So there's not really a lot of details. And the primary detail for her comes in the fact that she's actually wearing an apron over top of her red dress, which I thought would give some visual contrast. Then once I had her outfit drawn and colored in and just the way I wanted it, next I decided to do the same outfit again, but this time with her hood up. I got this idea from seeing a lot of the character concept images for animation where they'll show what a character looks like with a jacket on as well as off kind of thing. So I just wanted to make sure I understood completely, you know, how it would look when the cloak was up versus down. I didn't bother coloring this one again because it was right next to it and it's the same colors, so. Then after that I decided to shrink the characters down because I wanted some more room to do the turnaround portion of the image. So I shrank them down and then I placed guidelines to help figure out where the actual proportions were going to be so that I could redraw it and keep the proportions the same. However, um, when you're using the guidelines that you pull down from the rulers in Photoshop, it does snap when you're trying to draw and make your drawing look really weird. So what I did then is to just use those guidelines to draw out separate guidelines on a separate layer and then lower the opacity so I can just draw on top of those. So once my guidelines were in place, then I could proceed to drawing her in profile view. Now for this a character sheet, I did only draw her in the front view and profile view. I did leave out the three quarters view and back view. Part of that was just because I'm actually, you know, pretty comfortable drawing three quarter view because it's sort of my default, whereas I'm not as comfortable with front view or profile view. In my last video, I did also briefly touch on the color scheme for my comic. The entire comic is going to be done in shades of red, green, or grayscale, including black and white. So red is pretty much entirely in the red family. So her hair is pink, and then her dress, her shoes, her cloak are all shades of red. I did decide to do something a little bit different and made her cloak actually a much darker red versus a more vibrant true red. I wanted to use that color more in her dress and keep the cloak dark. To me, her cloak symbolizes protection, sort of like her armor. It keeps her safe in a symbolic, metaphorical sense. I like the idea that it's darker as opposed to the bright red of her dress underneath, which would symbolize her being a little bit more exposed. Now the next character I want to show you guys is a character from a different comic that I'm planning on doing called Crystal Dream Princess. This is the main character, Chris. Originally my plan was to almost work on them simultaneously. I would be drawing Little Red Riding Hood while doing a lot of the prep work for Crystal Dream Princess, such as character design sheets. However, during this process, that ended up changing a bit. 
but I want to talk about that a little bit more later. So I started this one out a little bit differently. I had done some rough doodles in a sketchbook and then rather than just starting from scratch digitally I decided to take a picture of it with my iPad and then start with those doodles as a base. Now unfortunately you are going to see a few um, jumps here in the drawing. Problem is the program that I'm using to record my screen which is OBS Open Broadcast software I think. For some reason it doesn't seem to acknowledge the windows that pop up in Photoshop like the liquify which is what I'm using here to adjust the lines. Uh, so one thing that I did learn from doing it this way is I had drawn a little torso to kind of get an idea of her body type as well as a little head separately from each other and then try to put them together and I don't really recommend that. If you can, try to always draw the head and the body together because they'll just fit a lot better. Whereas here I had to adjust and redraw and resize a lot and it probably would have been easier if I had just drawn them together from the get-go. But once I've got a basic figure that I'm happy with, then of course I go in and add the guidelines again. And also while I'm adding those guidelines, because there's straight lines across, I'm noticing that there were a few areas where I was a little bit off. So like I had to adjust the length of the leg. There's a liquify jump again because I noticed that some things didn't line up quite right. For example, her waist was a little bit lower on one side than the other. So a handy tool to help keep everything proportionate and not lopsided. So here I am having to resize the head again because it's just not quite working. And then I do end up resizing the body a bit as well to make her a little bit more slender. She is supposed to be a teenager. And of course, um, I do highly recommend flipping your drawings every once in a while just to make sure everything is symmetrical because as you can see here, I did have to adjust the eye again to make sure that they lined up. And then now I'm actually drawing out the guidelines again, again so that the snap feature doesn't make my drawing all wonky. And then that way I can do a turnaround and make sure I keep everything proportionate. For this one, I did do a little bit more of a turnaround because I did start with the three quarters view. Now I'm drawing the front view. It's really interesting when you're uh, using these guidelines to draw the figure again because the first time that you draw the figure, all of the proportions seem to feel natural while you're doing it and it just seems right and it's really easy to do. But then when you're trying to draw it again and fit within those guidelines, suddenly it seems a little bit more difficult to match those same proportions again. Really interesting. But again, also good practice because if I hadn't used those guidelines, then I'm sure her proportions would have come out completely different. Now, after drawing the front view, I am going to go ahead and do a profile view as well. Profile view I mentioned is one of the angles I'm not as comfortable with. That's primarily in the face, however. The head, I almost never draw profile, which is something that I do need to practice. However, the body is a little bit easier for me because drawing the torso for some reason in profile view is one of my go-to doodles when I'm bored. Kind of like how, you know, you draw eyes and hearts and things like that a lot just randomly on like in the margins of your papers and stuff. For some reason I've always done torsos as well so I got torsos down pat. <laughs> the rest of it not so much. At this point I'm not really, I'm not yet at a skill level where I can draw the same face over and over again so it was kind of pointless for me to try to do it because I just wasn't going to get anywhere in this session to do the character profile. That's a big reason why I want to do this starter comic in the first place so that I can get in the habit of drawing a person over and over again. It will help me uh, develop that eye to be able to 
get the features to look the same so you can tell it's the same person without having to rely solely on colors and outfit and hairstyle. So essentially I have the opposite of same face syndrome and that I can't draw off the same face. By the way, I am drawing these on 8.5 by 11 in uh, landscape mode, just in case I decide I want to print these out so they'll fit nicely on a regular 8.5 by 11 page. Now here's where things start to fall apart for me, which you guys may not see as much watching it, but I um, was put under a lot of stress doing this, trying to work on both comics at the same time, especially the fact that I'm trying to work on my primary comic before I even really finish working on my practice comic. Because the whole point of the practice comic was to teach myself the stuff that I don't know about making a comic. And yet, I'm not allowing myself to actually learn those things before I'm trying to jump into my primary comic. And uh, because of that, it did cause me a lot of stress and frustration because while I'm drawing this, especially her face and her hair, I know that I don't know what I'm doing. And it really makes this whole character sketch, in my opinion, actually kind of obsolete. I'm not going to be using this later. I didn't really have a concrete idea of the style that I was going to be using. I have since then done some more style studies to figure out the actual drawing style that I'll be using. And because of that, you know, her face isn't going to look like her face. I haven't practiced drawing faces over and over again, so who knows what her face is going to look like once it comes time to actually draw the comic. Same with her hair. I want this comic to be kind of Art Nouveau style, so I wish trying to do that with her hairstyle like I knew that I wanted her to have kind of a simple shoulder length bob cut but then I'm also trying to figure out how to add these sort of art nouveau styled strands everywhere but I, I'm just trying to figure it out on the fly I haven't practiced it out and I'm already doing the character sheet even though I don't really know what I'm doing so that was probably the biggest thing that I learned here is that I just needed to stop and let the process go naturally and stop trying to force it and jump ahead and cram everything together because I really really wanted to get Crystal Dream Princess ready to go as soon as possible. So I came up with this idea of working them both at the same time and because of that I actually did end up having quite a bit of an emotional issue going through with this and I had to stop myself and rework it. So now I'm focusing completely on Little Red Riding Hood. I have stopped all progress on Crystal Jean Princess for the time being. I can focus completely on my practice comic and just focus on learning. So, <laughs> sorry that's a bit of a, a rant there, but I just wanted you guys to kind of understand. Maybe hopefully learn that for you guys yourselves. You know, don't get bogged down in wanting to make everything right away and making everything perfect right away. It's not going to happen. It's not. But eventually I decide to move on to the clothes. Finally going back to just getting down basic ideas, which for that I do think, you know, at least I managed to do that in this, so it's not a complete waste of time that I did this. For her clothes, for the most part, I had a pretty good idea of what it was that I wanted to do. I knew that I wanted her to have a black flowy skirt and a white kind of feminine top, although the top I wasn't really sure exactly what I wanted, if I wanted a blouse or something else. So I did have to fiddle with that one a little bit. And then I knew that she was going to have a gray hoodie. I wanted to keep her outfit kind of monochromatic, but also very feminine. It's to kind of show the aspect of her character where she is feminine and maybe a little bit different and quirky. But at the same time, she's also really shy and reserved and doesn't want to stand out too much. So she keeps it with blacks and whites and grays and just everything is really kind of understated. I keep going back and forth on whether or not I should have drawn that other arm in the profile view. Because on the one hand, you want to be able to see the body and what's going on underneath the arm. But on the other hand, 
it looks really really bizarre without that arm there and again with the hoodie it looks especially bizarre without the sleeve there I just so I really don't know maybe I should have done two one with one without and that might be what I do next time I decide to tackle her character design now and there I go again with the uh, trying to do the art nouveau type hair I don't think it looks terrible what I ended up with but it's just knowing that eventually it's going to be so much better and that I'm going to do this whole thing again you know it, it makes it seem kind of silly I guess but here I am using the different select tools to try to select her hair so I can add some color in I used the magic wand tool and the magnet tool primarily I believe uh, to select it and then I'm just testing out some colors here. Initially, I was just picking random browns using the color wheel. It's not really a wheel, but I wish I could show you the color selections. But again, it didn't get captured while I was recording this, so. But I wasn't really happy with it, so then I decided to get a palette that I found on Pinterest with skin colors. But um, they're all shades of brown, which is what I wanted her hair to be, so. I used that and then just kind of played around with it. Honestly, these colors are changing too. Since I've done this, I actually did a color palette test where I drew a just random figure so I could try to come up with an overall palette for the comic itself. And there I go, I add in the skin tone as well, which also changes. And you can see me kind of fiddling with the shading I end up adding, trying to add blush at one point, but you can't even tell because it's so light. But anyways, that's pretty much it for this video. I am looking forward to getting better thanks to my practice comic. And hopefully you guys will be able to see that growth as I continue to make these videos. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope that you learned something from this. And I will see you guys next week when I plan to show you some of the panels that I'm drawing for the actual Little Red Riding Hood comic. As always, you know, like, subscribe, comments are always particularly appreciated. And I will see you guys next week.